In this video, I'm going to go over iPerf 2.014's uh, isochronous traffic. Um, it was initially developed in 2.13, but only uh, for UDP, and for with 2.014, it will support TCP as well. Isochronous traffic is basically same in time, and what we're trying to do is better emulate a video source in the receiver. Um, so you want for the receiver to properly display the video, it needs to be you know, isochronous with respect to the um, generator of the or the server, the video server, or the video signal. Um, so basically, on a on a isochronous run, you're going to have traffic or frame of which will be a burst of packets. We're like we're calling a frame here or a burst. It's sort of the same thing. Um, of every one over, you know, one over frames per second. So this T interval is when the packets are going to be bursted out. And the, the amount of packets is going to be based upon, uh, up for us, is a log normal distribution because it's, it's a variable burst size. So that's what we do with isochronous traffic on the generation side or on the client side uh, with the VBR. There is an option such that if you set the standard deviation of VBR to zero, that these burst sizes will always be the same. But this, so that's the general idea: is every you know frames per second, every one over you know t, there's going to be a burst, and that's the profile. Um, and then what we care about significantly is the burst latency. So from when that packet was the first, you know, you know first. Um, when the frame was first sent, or where the first pack of the frame was sent, to the final uh, frame being received, so it's sort of saying how long is the burst latency, um, and so that's what video frames, video decoders care about. They want to be able to, um, you know, reconstruct a video frame, and that latency is relevant to if you know what the if they can complete the reconstruction or not. Anyway, so there's frames and bursts. And so anyways, I'm not going to go into all the details. You can read this. This is out, off of the um, iPerf 2.013 enhancement slides, which you can find on SourceForge. So anyways, to actually use uh, iPerf um, isochronous capability, you, you, know, you on the server, you don't really have to do anything special other than start it. Let's go ahead and do it with one second intervals. And then the client to do a TCP version, which we'll do here, um, just go to the host. And what you give is a, I know it's through an I interval one. What you give it's isochronous. It's a long option, and then you it's a has a it has some default values, but it's better to override them. So you use the equal sign. If if 60 is the or the first number is an integer, um, it doesn't have to be an integer. It, any is a number or float that will set how many frames per second. That's the one over T value you saw in the picture. Then there's a uh, colon there to separate. So for example, we'll do a 40 megabit per second video stream with a say there's a 10 megabit standard deviation of that log normal and that should do it. So um, the iPerf server will tell the um, client, you know, hey, I'm doing an isochronous capability um, and I'm going to enable trip times on this as well because I think that's a good idea to see what happens so you see the isochronous trip times um, get started and then what you're going to notice is the burst latencies are coming in the um, output so th this is how long it took to get that TCP burst so you know TCP is writing a burst writing a writing a pack you know a, a burst size by a bytes and this is the latency distribution of that and then the MP for in the net power are also available to you um, so that's what you get um, if you need more information if you you want to sort of put it into histograms you can use the histogram option on the server um, it works for both TCP and UDP as well. Just do histograms. You're going to have to play with binning to based upon the, um, but based upon the um, sizes of the, you know, about your network characteristics. You want to play around with the bin size. But what you're going to see now is you see this F8 PDF. This is a probability distribution function. It's really a histogram, and it's giving you binning for that. You know how many frames came in at different at different speeds with the bin width at one millisecond in this case so it was like okay um, 56 frames came in at a millisecond or better two two came in a millisecond later and whatnot and I'll go through all the how to read the frame histograms in another video but this gives you idea that you'll get the histograms if you want if you want more if you want better different binning you can do it with uh, with the uh, 
with an option to the histograms, so which is, let me see if I can get that working. Let's so just say, that instead of doing, let's do 100 microseconds instead. That should get you more, a little bit more visible, you know, granularity into the distribution, which you should see, you'll see a little bit more. Uh, I'm not seeing a ton more, but the, the generally you should see more. Uh, speaking of that, so anyways, that's there. For UDP, nothing different really. Um, TCP surprisingly is useful because of uh, DVRs tend to use TCP even for um, video streaming. So TCP is a good thing to test with isochronous, but it was originally developed with UDP in mind. So if you do a minus U, we do a minus U, same thing except for now instead of um, uh, you're going to have packet latencies as well. So this is actually packet latencies, not frame latencies. So uh, on UDP. Um, but it does give you an isochronous profile. So if you were to take a Wireshark capture, that profile, that traffic is going to look more like a video stream. It's not going to look like a standard, you know, iPer stream where it's just, you know, p metering packets at some delay. It's going to have these bur frames that are bursting and then block waiting and bursting and waiting. So anyways, give that a try, play with it, and see if it um, works for you or not.